Lagos, Johannesburg, Nairobi, Kampala. A common challenge exists across Africa's cities. One major challenge is transportation. Even if you're going to a place that's not so far, you can spend three hours in traffic. Reports indicate that Nairobi loses more than 830 million US dollars annually in lost productivity attributed to traffic jams. On the western side of the continent, Lagos loses about 9.3 billion US dollars in similar fashion. Without infrastructure, you cannot have economic growth. In fact, if you look at Africa's uh, growth, especially during the turn of this century, it has been infrastructure-led. In terms of needs, Africa has a financing gap of about $170 billion annually for the development of infrastructure. Of that, only $70 billion is generated internally uh, through each of these economies. In other words, the funding gap is about $100 billion. Now, that gap is big. And so Africa has to rely on external sources of funding. And some of it normally would come or has tended to come from friendly countries like China. I would be amiss if I don't also take this opportunity to thank the government and the people of the Republic of China for the confidence that they have shown in our country, Kenya. Without their confidence in our country, the private sector would not have invested in our country. Nairobi's recently commissioned elevated expressway stands as a conspicuous example of African countries' quest to solve the transport challenges in their urban environments. So this is a new dawn for us Kenyans. Launched in July 2022, the 27-kilometer Chinese-built toll road has fast become an important piece in Kenya's jigsaw puzzle in search for a more efficient transportation system in its capital. It benefits the motorists by cutting down various transport-related costs. And it cut my time, travel time. One way I was to normally commute for one, one and a half hour, depending on traffic and hours. But this today, luckily in five minutes, I had crossed the place. From South B till Westlands, it just took me hardly five minutes. So it's really nice. I can see that we are coming up since the Kenyan and the Jew. I mean, it is going to help big time. Shorter travel times, reduced transport costs, pollution reduction, and more are parks that have come with the emergence of new road networks across Africa. It has really helped change the face of Africa. Uh, first of all, in, in different ways, aesthetically, because if you look at some of the major projects that have been done, they've really helped improve the faces of the city. Uh, the, city the cities look good. Yeah, and apart from that, even uplifting the face in terms of uplifting the people, the Africans who depend on them, it's really worked. Funding has proven to be a key factor in African countries' decisions to lean more towards China than was the case decades ago. Some experts pin this to China's policy of non-interference in the internal affairs of other nations. An op-ed published by Al Jazeera notes that Chinese soft loans have enabled many African governments to avoid pressure from global governance institutions such as the IMF and the World Bank to meet Western norms of accountability and conditionality related to political and economic reforms such as the infamous structural adjustment that does not always serve the interest of Africans. But something else pushes the continent to favor China's assistance. The type of physical development that has taken place in China gives African countries uh, some sense of some type of confidence and uh, some type of confidence in them that these guys are experts in what they're doing because they've done it in their country. We've not seen those projects fail. So we believe that they can use their expertise in what they've done there and bring it here, especially since some of their developments happened years ago. So we tend to think that if they were able to do this, let's say 15 years ago, by now they've 
really advanced in technology and in other aspects so they'll obviously bring better to us and beyond kenya other african countries have also benefited from chinese farms competitive advantage in road infrastructure construction and it's not just roads African countries have also improved much of their rail transport in recent years thanks to financial, engineering and technical cooperation with China. From the 480km Nairobi-Mombasa standard gauge railway line to the 752km Addis Ababa-Djibouti line, China is designing, financing and constructing railways that are transforming Africa's transportation infrastructure. A railway is the donkey of the transportation modes is the heaviest carrier and it's cheap and you can maintain it um, at very very minimal costs. Chinese built railway projects are more than just impressive feats of engineering. They are symbols of better connected societies, economic opportunities and a budding China-Africa alliance. In Nigeria's commercial capital of Lagos, traffic remains a major challenge in citizens' day-to-day -day lives. And as acquisition of cars continues to increase, experts think railways are the way out. Since its launch in June 2021, the Lagos Ibadan Railway is already changing transportation challenges for Nigerians. It's the first dualized uh, rail line in the country, so that two will be going, I mean, a, a rail will be going and coming at the same time. So for Ibadan Rail, it is designed to evacuate large number of people that are being uh, crisscrossing Ibadan Express. Constructed by the China Civil Engineering Construction Corporation, this railway line now enables Nigerians to spend shorter times on the road. Experts think it has the potential to fast track Nigeria's progress. Beyond Nigeria, other railway networks stand out. But it does not stop at that. China's influence on Africa's transport sector is also felt in other ways across Africa. Airports, light rail transit systems and bridges are among other critical transport infrastructure that China has helped African countries build, refurbish and maintain. All these infrastructure projects dovetail into China's Belt and Road Initiative, which was proposed in 2013 with an aim to build trade and infrastructure networks connecting Asia with Europe and Africa along the ancient Silk Road routes. PRF doesn't just stop at trade and infrastructure, it is also person to person uh, in terms of human connectivity, uh, but also in terms of technology transfer. Uh, and some of the sectors that benefit, like ICT and the rest, also connect people quite a lot. So um, this uh, Belt and Road Initiative, which mirrors the old silk uh, and maritime and silk road, is also a forum that has brought together over 106 countries, 32 uh, international organizations, and many other participants, uh, which is really a forum uh, that is very much in line with the global development agenda to support economic development. With the continued progress on Africa's infrastructure, the continent opens up more, thereby creating jobs, improving security, and placing African countries at a better place to sustain themselves.